This question is about therapy and or meditation. If meditation alone is enough, or um, is therapy a waste of time? Because it's only working on personality. So, of course, always not a short answer. <laughs> so when I first came to Opsho, I felt this is my spiritual master. He's a Buddha. I want to be at his feet. I want to experience what is a Buddha, what is a Christ. And I'm sure that I will be enlightened within a few years of being with him. That was my deep, sincere wish. I was shocked. One month after being there, when I got initiation from Osho, he said to me, do many groups. So I, maybe I've told this story before, maybe you remember, but it's my personal story, so it's a deep impression. When I sat at Osho's feet, it was the first moment I understood what is the mind. Before, I didn't know what mind is, because it was just me. And I could feel between me and him, there was this wall. And I couldn't hear what he was saying, because I had this big wall of thoughts in between him and me. But somehow, a few words got, got through the wall and hit me. And I was like, how does he know that? How does he know that? He knows me better than me. How does he know what he's who I am. But then at the end, when he, he talked to me about seven, ten minutes, I didn't hear that he had finished his speech. I was just like completely in a wonderful state, state, but also very spaced out. I was not at all grounded. So he looked at me and said, hmm, do many groups. And I was shocked. Like, I didn't want to go to Pune. Uh, I didn't want to go to Osho for doing therapy groups. Not my interest at all. But he looked at me and saw, this is a very ungrounded English boy. And he really needs to work on himself. He needs to discover his personality. I didn't even know I had a personality. First, I had to realize I have a personality before I can go beyond it. Before I could learn meditation, I needed to know what is therapy. And so I did all the money I had. I just spent it on groups. Um, in those next six months, I just did groups, 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 meditation, meditation. And uh, actually, it was for nine months, just groups and meditation. And then I became uh, a volunteer worker in the ashram. And that was like another level. And that was how we worked with Osho. It was like... Um, the spiritual work was at a deeper level if you were a worker in the ashram. The groups were, so we had different categories of people. Visitors, who just did meditations, just did groups. Um, group participants, yes. Then we had uh, ashram workers, then residents. Very hierarchical in Punawa. And that's the way it was with Osho. You know, there were thousands of people and to get close to the master, you had to go through these levels to get closer to him. But that was my experience, and I feel Osho was right. I did have to do many groups, because there were so many layers of my unconscious that I was unaware of. I didn't know how to relate to people. I didn't know. He gave me the name with the meaning love. And I knew, I didn't know what love was. And it was only through therapy groups that I could do some cleaning of my personality that I was then able to relate with people. So not only from my own personal experience that I find therapy very valuable, uh, that then my meditation could go much deeper, that was definitely true for me. Um, although I only wanted to meditate in the beginning, uh, I could see also later, I observed of course thousands of people in the many years of being with Osho, and thousands of people in the years afterwards. And I could see that some people only do meditation. And actually, we can see that they have a lot of layers of their unconscious that they're not aware of until something provokes. Uh, and unfortunately, this is my observation, maybe my criticism, that some of the people that were close to Osho that got into positions of authoritative power, they didn't do enough therapy themselves. 
It was, they thought maybe just being close social was enough. But actually, their egos have come up and uh, they're controlling people and they're making divisions. So I can see that when um, people have a position of power, also it reveals uh, what is hiding in their unconscious. So therapy groups help us see our personality. Uh, but also people that only do therapy are also like get caught in a in a loop, in an endless cycle, always analyzing, always analyzing. And it's like, do this group, or oh, it's great for a few weeks, and then, oh, I have to do another group. It's great for a few weeks, a few months, and oh, then I need to do another. Therapy can also be addictive. And I see that therapy alone also doesn't work. Because it's just you're just in the outer level of the wheel, and the only way to go beyond our suffering, the only way to go to the center of the wheel, the center of the chakra, the center of our being, is through meditation. And it's very essential to do both therapy and meditation. This has been Osho's vision, and I absolutely agree with it, hundred percent. That's why I call my work awakening psychology. Psychology is to analyze, to understand, but awakening is to become enlightened. And I can see I've met many people who are not in Osho's sphere. I've also been to Buddhist groups and I've been to Aura Soma. Uh, so, you know, I've met with New Age people and Buddhist people. And there are some many good people in the world. There are some people that are really trying to understand themselves through psychology. And many people in psychology realize that they have to understand what is consciousness. Uh, but they still don't, um, they're still hiding some, or some parts of their personality is still hidden. Uh, so, you know, I think therapy, uh, therapy on its own also doesn't work because we also tend to cut off our vision from what we don't want to see. And unless we are challenged in a new way, we don't open these new levels. So, um, like another perspective is, is if we only meditate, it's like the wheel. Remember, the chakra is a wheel, but also the Buddhist and Hindu uh, symbols of a wheel of life are very important. The wheel of Dharma, the wheel of Samsara. If, the, if you meditate, the wheel... It's just like a static wheel, it's not moving. But, but that's great. When you're sitting silently in meditation, yeah, we're all enlightened. Everything is perfect. But when you live in daily life, the wheel has to move. Then all the mud it passes through gets, gets, comes up. And if you don't have a center, and the center only comes from meditation, you get lost in the mud of the world. We need to have both. And this is the vision of the new age, uh, that Osho and all the new enlightened masters are all trying to teach us. Meditate, but live in the world. It's no good going into a cave or into a monastery. I understand it sometimes. Sometimes they, oh yeah, it would just be easy just to be a monk. Forget, forget the world. It's too difficult. War, arguments, money survival problems. There are too many problems in this world. It would be easier just to be a monk. But it's, it's not real life. The real life is living in this world with consciousness. And we need therapy to clean up our personality. It's, therapy is not a waste of time. Those people who are just sitting and thinking, okay, if I'm sitting with an enlightened master, it's enough. It's not true. Otherwise, I would be enlightened many years ago, and I wasn't. Still not. <laughs> but I still try. Um, Sitting with an enlightened master is not enough. It's just a support. It gives you a glimpse of your own possibility. Meditating alone is not enough because you automatically cut off what you don't want to see. Meditation alone is automatically suppressing. That's a wonderful phrase I always remember from Osho when he invented the Mystic Rose Meditation. Meditation done alone is automatically suppressing. So all those people that are meditating quietly, when a strong thought comes up, or a strong emotion comes up, maybe a strong sexual desire comes up, <gasps> cut it off. They ignore it. Then they space out. 
Meditation alone doesn't work. Therapy alone doesn't work. It's a combination. We need to use all. Even uh, Osho suggested also hypnosis can work. We, uh, Osho invented um, many meditations. That's maybe his great, unique contribution to the world. Uh, that he saw there are many different types of people. Some people can't sit silently. Some people need to dance. Some people need to scream and release their emotion. But also he was open to every type of therapy and every type of psychology to help us release our emotions, heal our body, understand our mind, and then go into meditation. So we need always. 